Shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain is born down in a lonely manger the humble Christ was born and God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn go tell it on the mountain over the hills and on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, laid in time behold him from offspring of the virgin's womb. Failed in flesh the Godhead see, nailed the incarnate deity, pleased the man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteous 
flesh, flesh, like and like to all he brings, fresh with healing in his wings. While he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. The woman's conquering seed grows in us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now in face, snap thy image in its place. Second Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We good? Did you know where to sit this morning? I yeah, know. This is Love Feast configuration. So now you're, you know, this is just the easiest way to do a Love Feast. So it works and we're flexible. And you're not around the tables like two weeks ago. <laughs> So we're, we're good. We're glad. And what a, remind you, what a beautiful service we have tonight with the Moravian Love Feast. It's going to be a great time. This is the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, uh, Advent uh, is late this year. It's the latest it can be. Uh, it's the four Sundays before Christmas. And so this, this is it. So it means the last Sunday of Advent is also Christmas Eve. And some of you ask, because we've said, you know, on Christmas Eve, we have both services in the morning and then two services at night. We also have Sunday school. Uh, uh, so we have a normal Sunday morning schedule. And then we have the 6 o'clock and the, uh, I still call it 11 o'clock. Just go, go with me, the 1045. Uh, so we remember that. But as we remember uh, Advent, today this is the first Sunday uh, we're going to light in a few moments the candle of hope. It's also the candle of the prophets. Uh, the things that we hope for, that we wish for, that we want. The message of the prophet is uh, uh, what is to be and what will be and what is. It's all together. Now, you need to remember two, uh, one sentence. So, uh, y'all practice this. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Can you do that? Try it. All right. During Advent, we wait for the one promised in Scripture, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We wait for the one who would bring answers to the world filled with questions. And we wait for the one who can heal what has been wounded and mend what has been broken. We wait for the one who can renew our weary spirits and ignite our hearts with hope. And we light the candle of hope. And hear now the word of the prophet, the prophet Isaiah. All oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire calls water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. 
you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed, we have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We are all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not exceedingly be angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. And our theme for this year's Advent uh, observance is that we are the clay, and you are a potter. We are all the work of your hand. And here now, the words from Mark. Mark 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lessons. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour... No one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. Well, you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock's crow or at dawn or else you may find you, you, he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And in the hearing of that word, may we find the meaning of that word. And may we find that which in which we need to live our lives. May we find the hope of this season. May we find the hope of the risen Lord, for he is truly here. May we pray. Our Father, we thank you for the opportunity of this day and opportunity of worship. We thank you for this season. We thank you for the preparation that we make for the coming of Christmas. We thank you that We have the opportunity to share together in your love, in your care. We're thankful that we truly are the clay in your hands. That you mold us and make us. And in you we find our purpose, we find our truth, we find our life. For you are the giver of all life. Help us to know this day how appreciative we must be of that life. Help us this day to know how we must use that life. Help us this way to know that we must do the things that are right, the things that are true, the things that are just, the things that are merciful, that we must live our lives in a way worth living. For this is what you would have of us. And Lord, we come into these moments because it is a time of reflection, It is a time of introspection. It is a time of looking inward as well as outward. It is a time to remember that we have sinned. That there is time when the sun has gone down on our anger. 
There is time when we have been hurtful and hateful. There is times when we have not been loving and kind and we have not been respectful of the resources that you have given us, even this earth. Oh, Lord, forgive us. We have missed the mark. We have sinned. But you call us. You call us to be who we need to be. You call us to be your children. For your loving arms encircle us. And you give us your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. So this day we are grateful and thankful. We live in hope. We pray this day in the name that is so precious. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alice, join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O Our Father, we thank you that we can come to you, that we can adore you, that we can give and bring you gifts, that we can give these our offerings, and that in giving of our offerings that they will be used in your kingdom, they will be used here in this place to share your love, to share your word, to share the work of your church. They'll also go beyond this place into our land and into our world we go into all the world and we thank you that we can give in your name we do pray amen praise god from whom all blessings flow praise him And 
That sounded good. It always sounds good, but it seemed especially good today. That's because Lindsay and I both have a sore throat today. <laughs> oh, this. Well, God bless you. So Robin and DJ and Haley, you That's what I was hearing. I'll watch what I say next time. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah. Well, what's, he's crazy today. <laughs> no, it's a new year. Today is the first Sunday of a new liturgical church year. The old year is gone. Last year, last Sunday, not last year. Last, well, it was last year, church-wise. Uh, was the reign of Christ Sunday. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. We began a new cycle, a new year, and it's always, the, again, the first four Sundays before Christmas is Advent, or it's sometimes called Little Lent. The two great celebrations in our Christian faith are, of course, we're an Easter people. We see everything through the lens of Easter. And the other one, of course, is Christmas, because we celebrate the birth of Jesus. At Easter, we precede Easter with the 40 days, not counting holidays and Sundays, uh, as Lent. That is the oldest uh, observance of the church, a time of preparation to understand what it means that Jesus Christ is risen. The second oldest would be Lent. Uh, Advent, we'll get it right in a minute, and that is we also need to prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Christ. What does it mean that Jesus came into our world? What does it mean that Jesus is in our world? What does it mean that Jesus is in our heart and in our life? And, and that takes preparation. Don't you get tired of people saying, are you ready for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, in the summer they say, is it hot enough for you? Yeah, it's hot enough. And soon they're going to say, is it cold enough for you? I think two weeks of winter and two weeks of summer is enough for anybody. But it doesn't matter what I think. It is, to quote Joe, it is what it is. So we, we live in that. But we have to get ready for Christmas. And some of you are, are just really good at it. Some of you, uh, you, you're, you probably already got everything that you need to bake done. God bless you. You're sick. <laughs> That's just not right. <laughs> you shouldn't be that prepared. You shouldn't be that organized. And you shouldn't be. Anyway, but God bless you. I'm proud of you. How do we prepare for this holiday? How do we really understand what it means. It's easy, well, not all that easy, to, to clean our house and to get the decorations out and, 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 and to, to put them up and to, to see them. And, and the most wonderful thing over the years, we've collected ornaments and decorations, and they all have meaning. As I shared with you before, uh, it's uh, really hard for me right now to uh, decorate the house with Janet being in assisted living. Uh, and uh, it's good to have daughters, you know. So while we were out eating, uh, a while back, Lauren came in because Lauren is organized and uh, decorated the house. But when I looked at some of the uh, ornaments in the boxes, because we didn't use them all, uh, it reminded me on those last few years when Janet's the Alzheimer's was there and we didn't, weren't quite aware of how severe it was, uh, she damaged so many of the ornaments, not knowing. Uh, and that last year, if, you'd see in our, if you've been in our house, you know we've got that upstairs loft thing with the banisters. And uh, she tried to hang garland. And it was the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. Uh, because her perception, uh, Alzheimer's affects people in different ways. But in Janet, a lot of it was with her depth perception for some reason, and it, uh, it was just terrible. But, oh, how beautiful it would be to have her do that again. And I think how 
in this time of Advent, how we let precious moments slip from us because we're all concerned about different things. We're all concerned that everything be perfect. We're all concerned that everything's got to be just right, everything's got to be right on time, everything's just got to be here and there. And, and in that, sometimes we, we let go the more important things, where we have to live in the very moment that God has given us. We have to live in, in, in the very time that is ours. And in that time, in those memories that we're building, there we find it. And that's what Advent is about. And that's, that's beautiful, see, the, the theme that this year is, we got to understand God is the potter. He is the one that molds us and shapes us into the vessel that we need to be. And how does God do that? Well, I, I think one of the ways that God does that is the people he sends into our lives. And part of the thing we need to remember in this Advent season is how we have been molded by other people. How they have shaped us. And how God's grace has been shown in them to us. And then we also have to understand that we open our lives to God's will that we can help mold other people. By that same sense of love, that same sense of dedication, that same sense of purpose, that same sense of living. I remember uh, the person who baptized me. His name was Richard K. Redwine. Dr. Redwine at Bethany Baptist in Winston. And Dr. Redwine is also known as the great white father of Caswell. If you go into Caswell, you'll see his portrait. And in the Red Run building, uh, Dr. Redwine came to Bethany as an interim in state for a long time. And he was so neat. He, would just, uh, he, had, one, he had one major flaw, as we all do. He just loved Wake Forest. <laughs> he just loved Wake Forest. And ended up... Uh, uh, in fact, giving his house to Wake Forest and everything else. So that was his, it was his fall. One day, this was back before we had copiers, of course. It's hard to remember that there was a time before copiers. B.C., before copiers. Well, we had to have the uh, bulletins uh, sent out, and they didn't, this was, uh, they didn't use mimeographs. Even. Oh, God. They should have taught me in seminary how to mimeograph properly. <laughs> if you've never worked for a mimeograph machine, that's the worst thing. You get awesome. I won't go there. But anyway, they sent those out to be offset printed, all of our bulletins. But here's this wonderful man who is just a stately, generous, giving person, uh, just wise beyond measure. You know what, the one, well, I remember several sermons, but the one that sticks out in my mind, one day he stood up and held up the bulletin. He says, you know it costs money to print these bulletins, and your kids are making paper airplanes out of them. <laughs> I was guilty. <laughs> he also, I remember one other sermon. Uh, two, uh, it's odd the things you uh, I say you remember. He gave an illustration of a man uh, in a tightrope walking over a river, uh, Niagara Falls or something. And uh, the man takes a wheelbarrow and he asks, him, "Do you believe I can do this?" You know, all so, do you believe it enough to get in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> that's that's faith. <laughs> he also told me, uh, uh, "You know what the biggest room in the world is." The room for improvement. We remember things from people that impact us. We remember actions. We remember loving care. We remember not only words, but we remember the very presence of people. And that's what God is calling us to do and to be. To open our hearts to other people. 
to let them into our lives, to break down the walls of separation that abound around us, and to love and to care. And, and as we think about this child, God's purpose in this child, this child who comes in a way that is so unexpected, this child who comes to poor parents, this child who comes and is born in a manger in Bethlehem, this child who is the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, God works in mysterious ways. And he works in us. We have to have that hope. We, we have to hope that with all of our being. We have to hope when, when, when hope doesn't even seem possible because God has still given us a breath of life. And in that breath of life, there has to be hope. And so we, we, we light the candle. And what are the things that you're truly hoping for this day? Now, the little kids, we know what they're hoping for. They're hoping for a big Christmas. What are the things that you're hoping for? What are the things that you hope to come to fruition in your life? And as you think of those things, the next question would be, what are the things that God would have you hope for? What are the things for which God would have you hope? Would he have that you would have the hope of being a more loving and caring person? Would he have that you would have the hope of sharing his hope to a world that desperately needs it? Would God have that you would hope for the joy and the peace and the love that are the candles of this season? What are the very things that you need to hope for and what are the very things that you can do to bring it about? Where you know that we are the clay, we are the material, we are the very essence of what God is doing in our world. God is speaking through people. He always speaks through people. And He does so as you open your life to His purpose. And when you find that purpose, when you find that hope, when you find and discover a fresh of a new, that you have the very image of God in you. And this is what the word that has come to us tells us. This is what the light of the world that has come into our world shows us and illuminates and asks us to respond to that. So we prepare for Christmas. We remember Christmas's past and the lessons of them. And we hope for this Christmas. We hope that we will be what God would have us to be. And that's the best Christmas. May we pray. Our Father, our hope is in You. We pray that we would open ourselves to You. For You do not force Yourself upon us. You come knocking on that door, the door of our heart and our life, and You ask to come in. And you ask us to see and to believe and to know and to hope. You ask us to recognize that we are your children. Oh Lord, let it be. Let it be. In your name we do pray. Amen. Our closing hymn. Emmanuel, God with us. And our invitation is that we would know this love of God as expressed in Jesus who is the Christ, who is the Lord. 
and our hope would be in him. We invite you to make that profession of faith. We invite you to be a part of our fellowship here at McGill in all the ways that we receive members as we stand and sing. Emmanuel. We've got lots of announcements. Of course, the number one announcement is that we want you to come back. Well, we want you to stay for Sunday school. We want you to come back tonight at 6 o'clock and have, uh, a, uh, enjoy and celebrate a Moravian love feast. Uh, just a, a wonderful, a wonderful time. Uh, the only thing, that I don't think they're going to bring the, their band yet this year. We're, one of the, sooner or later, we're going to get them to bring their brass band. Moravians are really good, but I, I discovered something a, a year or two ago. Every Moravian church has a brass band. They're really good at it because it's just a real part of their heritage. But like everybody else, they got ringers in the brass band. They pay people to play for them. I thought, hmm, how do they do that? And they, it's, it's funny. And, and they get people from Charlotte to go up to Winston and Old Salem to play. But it's beautiful. And I, if you've been following me on Facebook, you know the story. Uh, we were at Union Cross Baptist Church. We were neighbors with Union Cross Moravian, and we shared several services, and most importantly, a softball team. Really religious. Uh, but they always thought it was so funny uh, to send their brass band out on, on Easter morning. About 3 o'clock, they start playing in the neighborhoods. Yeah, they play Sleepers Awake, which would fit well with today's sermon. You know, be aware, be aware. Well, the first year that you were there as a Baptist minister in the neighborhood, they would play in front of your bedroom window. Very thoughtful. So they would play, and um, we were laying in the bed, and, and the next morning Janet said, you know, I heard that music and I just thought I was in heaven. And then I looked over and saw you and knew I wasn't. <laughs> I said, well, thanks. <laughs> she said, that's not what I mean. <laughs> God blesses us with wonderful experiences. Come tonight and be blessed with the experience of a Moravian love feast. It's a wonderful week. What, 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 you can't be at a service when you pass out a, sweet, a, a slightly sweet bun and drink coffee. It's decaf coffee, so don't worry. Uh, that's the other thing they insisted on at Union Cross Baptist Church. They only served decaf coffee because they didn't want anybody to, um, I, they didn't want to mess up their sleep while I preached. <laughs> Not very nice. <laughs> yeah. All right, so come out tonight. Next Sunday night, we're going to have a wonderful, uh, The Littlest Angels, and that's going to be a great time. Any uh, announcements that we need to make about that? Because we're going to be rehearsing for the children's musical. Uh, the children's musical starts at 6, and we're going to have a dessert fellowship following. Uh, children need to come at 4, and we'll have pizza for them to eat before the program starts. But uh, we'll rehearse again this Wednesday, and children come at 5.30, and we'll be rehearsing in here uh, to get ready for it. Anything else I need to mention? Is that got it? Good. You're good. Okay, Tuesday night we have another ball game at UNCC. It's Wake Forest. And so we're expecting, a lot, we hope for a lot of people there. So we need help at the concession stand. See Jennifer today. What, uh, 7 o'clock game? 7 o'clock game, 5.30. 5.30. All right. Let, we had a good crowd at the day. I mean, we had a good, our group was really good at Davidson. Talk about Wake Forest again. You, you know what a, a redundant is? You know what they're called? This is redundant. Demon deacons. 
Yeah, you like that? I like it. I thought that was cool. All right. Then Friday, December 8th, this Friday, the Family Life Committee is going to have a special movie night here at the church. It's a wonderful life. 7 o'clock, we're going to have a cocoa, hot cocoa bar and popcorn. It's going to be fun. Uh, so remember that. Yeah, it's a little getting colder, so you need some Brunswick stew. Six dollars at six dollars a quart. No, six dollars a pint and ten dollars a quart. We got it in the freezer, so uh, it's a good time for it. See, Bruce. Uh, Joint Mission Council is collecting gently worn or new. Emphasis is on new uh, for children up to size twelve. Also, new socks and underwear for preschoolers, and new toys for the empty stocking fund. All the tubs are in the. The lobby, the, the coats uh, are distributed by the Partnership for Children uh, and group, uh, one of the best groups, she knows that, one of the best groups in the county. And they're having their annual lunch on Tuesday. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, have I left anything out? Remember again, we are having Sunday school on New uh, not New Year's, we are having Sunday school on New Year's Eve. We're having Sunday school also on Christmas Eve. So remember that in regular service. We good? I didn't forget something? First time in a long time. <laughs> All right, let's stand. We are so glad that you are here this day. And now go from this place. Go in God's love. Go in God's grace. Go in God's mercy. And go and be the church. Be the church and bring the hope of a risen Lord that we anticipate and wait upon to the world that needs it. And as we do that, be his hands, be his arms, be his feet. And by the grace of God, be the face of Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. You've been watching and listening to the morning worship service at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, delivered the sermon. McGill Baptist Church is located at 5300 Poplar Tent Road. That's the corner of George Lyles Parkway. It's exit 54 off of I-85. You can get more information about our church by going to our website, mcgillbaptist.org, or call the church office at 704-788-1180. Again, 704-788-1180. Thanks for joining us at McGill. We hope you got a blessing from today's service.